Hi friends, it's your favorite first grade teacher, Miss McGurn here, and we are going to start talking about our reading lesson for today, which is all about making predictions while we're reading. Let's jump right into it, shall we? So we're gonna be working on 1.9D, which is make and confirm predictions. The first question you're probably asking yourself is what is a prediction? A prediction is an educated guess on what you think is going to happen next. There are many types of predictions that we make. We make predictions in math, we make predictions in science, but we're gonna be mainly focusing on predictions that you make while you're reading. And it's super important to make sure when you make that prediction that you're going through and you're checking it. So the big question that a lot of people ask is when can we make predictions? And in reading, you can make predictions at any point. Many times we have three. Before reading, we think about the picture, the illustrations, the title of the book, anything that could help us figure out what we think the story might be about. We also make predictions while we're reading. We can make a prediction on what we think is going to happen next to the character. And then we can confirm our predictions when we are done with our reading. The big things that I want you guys to walk away with is number one, Predictions can change. They don't always stay the same. The other thing I want you guys to make sure that you know is that predictions are not always right. Sometimes our predictions are wrong, and that's okay. We learn from that. Why was my prediction wrong? We're going to read this amazing story called Chester's Way by Kevin Henkes. This is a great book, and we're going to be making some predictions as we're reading. Looking at the title, looking at the picture of Chester on the cover, what do we think this story might be about? I want you to pause this video and I want you to make a prediction. Awesome. Hopefully you hang on to that prediction because I'm gonna be asking you about it later. Let's play Chester's Way. Chester's Way by Kevin Hanks. Chester had his own way of doing things. Hello, my name is Chester. I like croquet and peanut butter and making my bed. He always cut his sandwiches diagonally. He always got out of bed on the same side. And he never left the house without double knotting his shoes. Chester always had the same thing for breakfast, toast with jam and peanut butter. And he always carried a miniature first aid kit in his back pocket, just in case. You definitely have a mind of your own, said Chester's mother. That's one way to put it said Chester's father. Chester's best friend, Wilson, was exactly the same way. That's why they were best friends. Chester wouldn't play baseball unless Wilson played and they never swung at the first pitch or slid head first. Wilson wouldn't ride his bike unless Chester wanted to and they always used hand signals. If Chester was hungry, Wilson was too, but they rarely ate between meals. Some days I can't tell those two apart, said Wilson's mother. Me either, said Wilson's father. Chester and Wilson, Wilson and Chester, that's the way it was. They loved to go on picnics. Once, when Wilson accidentally swallowed a watermelon seed and cried because he was afraid that a watermelon plant would grow inside him, Chester swallowed one too. Don't worry, said Chester. Now, if you grow a watermelon plant, I'll grow one too. Chester duplicated his Christmas list every year and gave a copy to Wilson because they always wanted the same things anyway. For Halloween, they always dressed as things that went together, 
salt and pepper shakers, two mittens on a string, ham and eggs. They really are two peas in a pod, said Chester's mother. Looks like it, said Chester's father. In spring, Chester and Wilson shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In fall, they raked leaves together. And in summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Chester and Wilson, Wilson and Chester, that's the way it was. And then Lily moved into the neighborhood. Lily had her own way of doing things. I, I wanted to pause the video real quick because I want you to stop and think about the prediction that you made. After hearing all of these things about Chester and his friend, has your prediction changed in any sort of way? Pause the video, turn to an adult, and talk about it. Welcome back. Now that you've had a moment to talk about that prediction, I want you to learn about Miss Lily. I am Lily. I am the queen. I like everything. She wore band-aids all over her arms and legs to look brave. She talked backwards to herself sometimes so no one would know what she was saying. And she never left the house without one of her nifty disguises. Lily waved at all the cars that passed by, even if she didn't know who was in them. And she always carried a loaded squirt gun in her back pocket, just in case. She definitely has a mind of her own, said Chester. That's one way to put it said Wilson. When Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said they were busy. When she called them up on the phone, they disguised their voices and said they weren't home. If Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson crossed to the other and hid. She's something else, said Chester. Looks like it, said Wilson. One day, while Chester and Wilson were practicing their hand signals, some older boys rode by, popping wheelies. They circled Chester and Wilson and yelled personal remarks. Chester and Wilson didn't know what to do. Just when they were about to give up hope, a fierce-looking cat with horrible fangs jumped out of the bushes and frightened the older boys away. Are you who I think you are? Chester asked the cat. Of course, the cat replied. Thank you, Lily said Chester. You're welcome, Chester, said Lily. Thank you, Lily, said Wilson. You're welcome, Wilson, said Lily. I'm glad you were wearing a disguise, said Chester. And I'm glad you had your squirt gun, said Wilson. I always do, said Lily, just in case. Again, a great pausing point. Is your prediction changing as you're listening to this story? Remember that predictions are totally acceptable to change. So think about it. Are you still thinking that this story is going to go the way that you thought it did? Let's find out. Afterward, Chester invited Lily over for lunch. You have a muscle mouse cup, said Lily. Of course, said Chester. I do too, said Lily. Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson cut 
their sandwiches diagonally. Lily asked Chester's mother if she had cookie cutters, and she made stars and flowers and bells. That's neat, said Chester. Wow, said Wilson. That night, Lily invited Chester and Wilson to sleep over. You have a night light, said Chester. Of course, said Lily. I do too, said Chester. Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson wanted toast with jam and peanut butter for breakfast the next morning. Boring, said Lily. Try this instead. This is good, said Chester. Wow said Wilson. After that, when Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said yes. When she called them up on the phone, they had pleasant conversations. And if Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson waved and ran to catch up with her. Chester and Wilson taught Lily hand signals, and she taught them how to pop wheelies. Lily taught Chester and Wilson how to talk backwards, and they taught her how to double knot her shoes. Some days I can't tell those three apart, said Lily's mother. Me either, said Lily's father. Chester and Wilson and Lily, Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. For Halloween, they dressed as the three blind mice. For Christmas, Lily gave Chester and Wilson nifty disguises, and they gave her a box of multicolored shoelaces, extra long for double knotting. They loved to go on picnics, when Chester and Wilson told Lily about how they had each swallowed a watermelon seed once, Lily swallowed three of them. I'll grow a watermelon plant for each of us, she said. In spring, Chester and Wilson and Lily shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In fall, they raked leaves together. And in summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Chester and Wilson and Lily, Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. And then Victor moved into the neighborhood. What a fantastic story. I do love a good Kevin Hankis book. So the question now is, were your predictions correct? Why or why not? Turn and talk to your adult and talk about those predictions that you made and whether they were white, they were right or they were wrong. Remember, predictions are not always correct. So you might find yourself with an incorrect prediction and that's okay. But the question you have to ask yourself is, why wasn't my prediction correct? Where did I mess up on my prediction? When we're making predictions, we're thinking ahead about what we think is going to happen and checking to see if that we were right. Remember that predictions can change, so you need to be ready for that change. Again, I always like to share these titles so that you guys can see that there are other fantastic Kevin Hankis books if you enjoyed this one. As always, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you guys and I will see you later.